Greetings, mo- monsters. Uh, that's not right. Greetings. I'll give it some time. Greetings, mortals. Today I'm going to tell you how to hunt monsters in your TTRPG. I am someone who thinks that we should make death permanent again. Also known as Harrison Tarr. So, I have been, as of late, reading Hunter the Reckoning. And as I was reading through this, and consuming some content on the YouTubes, I started thinking about monster hunting in a broad sense, or at least structurally. Part of that was inspired by the story design section in this core rulebook. Using this story design section in the storytelling chapter of Hunter the Reckoning, combined with what I've seen in a couple of different videos and my own massive brain power, I've come up with a list of, well, it's not really a list, it's a step-by-step instruction manual, if you will, of how to run a monster hunt in your game. But before I get into the individual steps, let me give you something overarching. You should make most, if not all, monster hunts a mystery. In this way, you avoid the classic structure of a session where you walk into the next room of a dungeon, you see a monster, you kill the monster, you walk into the next room of the dungeon, you see a monster, you kill that monster, you see, you walk into the next room of the dungeons, and so on and so forth. You, you get it. This is a way to split up or not split up, switch up the structure of your game in a way that should be interesting and maybe a a little bit uh, more challenging for your players. Like any good mystery, you as the person writing, that's a quote, that's finger quotes, you're the GM so you're really running it, but you do have to do some prep. As the person prepping this mystery, this monster hunt, you should know what the monster is, and like all good monster hunts, you should have a victim already, whether that be a victim of killing or of something else, like their eyes getting stolen, having bad dreams, or something like that. But you should know that already, and that you should start with that as a base, and then build backwards. You are going to build backwards by by coming up with each of these six steps, and preparing them individually. Now, there's not going to be a lot of specifics in this, so if you're looking for somebody to tell you how to run a monster hunt specifically in 5e, there's not going to be a lot of uh, mechanical help here for you. But the concepts herein, and by herein I mean in this video, should be applicable to most TTRPGs if you are attempting to run a monster hunt. Hunter the Reckoning is set in modern day, but this is definitely applicable to any sort of monster hunt, whether it be in medieval fantasy or sci-fi or a modern day supernatural type game. First, the hook and the initial clues. This is the inciting incident, that scene at the beginning of every Supernatural episode where the actor is paid basically to scream and die and then that's the inciting incident for the, for the monster. You definitely need to start this off by including only the barest of clues. Maybe even those clues just give the players more questions, but you should definitely leave your players with more questions than answers off the get-go. They maybe even shouldn't be able to guess what monster it is just based off of this initial inciting incident. Next, you need to get the players or the party involved. Maybe they're monster hunters for hire already, or just doing it because they want to kill monsters, like in Hunter the Reckoning, but perhaps they need a little bit of incentive. You can make this monster hunt relevant to the main plot that they are pursuing. That's one avenue that you could take to get the players involved. You could have this monster in some way insult them or inconvenience them and make it a problem for them personally, and that's a really good one, especially if you're going to have this monster be a a talker. You could have it, 
you know, directly insult or, or just get on the nerves of the players or have it attack their interests in whatever locale they find themselves in. Or you could have that victim that the monster kills right off the bat be a beloved NPC. That's a really interesting way to, to catch your player's attention, though it can definitely be overused. But if you take a beloved NPC and just have them killed, you better know that your players are gonna go after and find that thing. Step two, the building danger and complications. This could be something like after the players start their initial investigation, the monster strikes again. It could be a second victim that is an NPC, or it could even be at the party. Obviously you don't want to make this the final encounter, so maybe it targets one of the members of the party while they're alone, forcing them to flee, or wounding them and leaving them as the rest of the party arrives just in time to save their life. The complication could be a third party intervenes into the investigation. Maybe the mayor or the you know the town leader the elder hired the the party to investigate this monster the killing or killings that have happened and somebody else like the local druids guild says hey it's none of your business you should get out of here i don't think druids it's druids circle not guild druids wouldn't have a guild that's too societal. You know, it could be the Thieves Guild. Hey, that's none of your business, leave it alone. And they try to intimidate the players off of that. It could even be somebody who's trying to do the player's job better and faster than them. A rival, a competitor, when it comes to hunting this monster. Step three, then, should be research and discovery. In a good monster hunt and in a good mystery, those players have to do some work, some research, to figure out what they're up against and who done it, as it were, or what done it. I suppose. You should provide and give them opportunity to access or discover information about this monster, what it is, what its abilities and weaknesses are, and you can give information about where it makes its lair or where its hunting grounds are. And a lair is an excellent way to uh, to pick a place for the final confrontation of this monster, or at least a place where they can go find it. Step four, prepare for the hunt. This is when your players are going to take what they've learned in their research and discovery in step three, and they're going to apply it to their preparation. They're going to buy specific weapons, silvered if they're fighting a lycanthrope, or they're going to buy wooden stakes if they're fighting vampires. They might have to do some final research about maybe this specific monster. Sure, it's a vampire, but is it the type of vampire that has to sleep in Earth from its home country every night? Is it the type of vampire that burns up in the sunlight or does it merely glitter? And whatever other tools that they might need to gather. Bait to draw the monster out of its lair. Traps to catch the monster Scooby-Doo style. You do have to do some work to incentivize this type of playstyle for step three and four. If your players aren't used to it, they're just going to skip those steps and go charging right in to face that monster as soon as they can locate it, rather than preparing and doing research on its strengths and weaknesses. Or they might even just wander the places where the victims were found and hope to become potential victims themselves so that they can then fight the monster. You need to make there be an in-game incentive, other than just good storytelling, for your players to not run in, you know, swords drawn right off the bat. Make that preparation necessary. And in fact, next week I'm going to have a video for you about how to make huntable monsters. The phrasing of that makes it seem like I'm making monsters more huntable, but actually what it's going to be doing is making them more deadly and hard to deal with unless you do your research and planning. Also, in order to prevent them trying to run in, uh, you know, swords drawn, no thoughts, you want to make death a actual negative in your game and a strong possibility. Like I said, make the monster more deadly, but if resurrection is accessible in your world, you're going to be hard pressed 
to prevent your players from putting themselves in harm's way. This should be a scary experience, hunting a monster. Step five. Now this you don't have to do for a successful hunt, but I like the narrative implications and the uh, result of doing something like this. Step five is you put in a last minute complication that sets your players at unease. This could be a betrayal of a trusted ally, either intentional or accidental. Maybe word of what the party has been doing gets to that monster, and that monster is able to prepare a little bit more. Maybe the rival or the competitor that they may be befriended or decided that they could work alongside of decides, nope, I'm doing this on my own, screw you guys, and they just go off and leave the party hanging. You could make that complication, it's impossible to access the idea deal tools or some of the tools or weapons that the party seeks out, though that one's not entirely fun. I mean, I think that you should limit the tools that they access solely based on, on realism, but that can be a complication. Hey, you wanted to get silver weapons to fight this werewolf, but we only have silver tipped crossbow bolts and a dagger. There's no longsword for the party fighter to use. This complication could also be a unforeseen obstacle having to do with the lair or where they find it. Maybe you wanted to take uh, an ATV after this creature and then kite it through the, the woods as you uh, shoot at it with a machine gun from the back. In order to approach the creature's lair, you have to pass through a section of forest where the trees are too close together to take your vehicle. And then you end up having to walk there and run back, which is not good if you're going up against something that's supernaturally faster than you. And finally, step six is the confrontation or the climax of this mystery slash monster hunt slash adventure. Personally, I think that this climax should be quick and brutal. This shouldn't be a long, stretched out combat with a whole bunch of different enemies. It should be quick one way or the other, whether your players win or lose. If you're playing a game like 5e, I don't think it should take much more than three, maybe four rounds. Also, during this confrontation, you want to make sure that the prep that your players did pays off. That weapon does a lot extra damage if it's made of something that the enemy is vulnerable to. Or their traps are able to be used. Even if the monster does well against those traps, they still had the opportunity to use those traps. Nothing's worse than spending a bunch of prep time on something that actually never gets used or the situation for its use never occurs. During that confrontation, you can also let there be potential consequences beyond just death. Maybe this is a monster that steals eyes, like I mentioned earlier. Or, if it's a werewolf, it can, could very likely convert one of your players to lycanthropy, or curse them or infect them with it, depending on the lore that you're going with. But that final confrontation with the monster should be dramatic, and it shouldn't overstay it's welcome. And finally, I have a bonus tip. After you face that monster and hopefully succeed, that is an excellent time and place for you as the game master to lay the threads for future adventures. Lay narrative threads that lead to something larger. If this is already baked into the main plot that the party is following, perfect. Just include the information that they need to move on to the next thing. Or if they're career monster hunters, you could include something to denote a relationship between this monster and another monster. They could find something in the spoils left by the adventurers who have tried and failed to kill this monster, and there's loot here. Or this monster that they're facing could just be the minion of a greater and more terrible monster. Like I said, this video took a more broad approach to this topic without too much detail, but there's certainly a bunch of things here that I could go into more depth on. How to lay those clues for a mystery, for example. I will be going into more depth on how to prep a a monster for this type of adventure next week, so keep an eye out for that video. If you enjoyed this, please do all the YouTube things like subscribe and like and comment and share this with your friends. It helps us out here on the channel. If you have any strong 
well-supported disagreements with what I said here today, uh, then keep them to yourselves. But if you have weak and easily overturned arguments, feel free to put those in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and good night, mortals.